Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to work through the auto setup physics parameters in iClone and how you can translate those into Unreal Engine 4 using LiveLink and tweak them and uh, basically adjust the physics parameters to get the best results in Unreal Engine 4. So uh, auto setup can now be used to bring iClone physics into Unreal Engine 4. Currently it only works for soft cloth and collision shapes on characters, so just be aware of that. Uh, you can see here on the Unreal LiveLink uh, page, there's a one-click asset transfer. Uh, basically, all the information that you'll need um, for LiveLink can be found on this page here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of tutorials as well. You can go up to learn and uh, check out the tutorials. Uh, basically, tutorials on any topic that you would like as well as this tutorial will be here as well. Um, so if you have any questions about you know, the different, different aspects of importing your, uh, your iClone characters and props and stuff into Unreal Engine, you can be found there. So let's talk about the character collision shapes first here. You can see the character that we have on the screen, the one we're going to bring into Unreal Engine 4 using LiveLink. I'm going to go to my scene manager and select. We have two soft cloth physics objects. We have our character's hair, which I've just selected here. If I go into physics, you can see the, the weight map here, um, Octavia. The weight map for the hair is a little bit more complicated. And there's a whole bunch of parameters down here that we can adjust. We're not going to bother adjusting these parameters in iClone right now. And we'll talk about that in Unreal in just a little bit. So now I'm selecting the character's cloak, which is the other object. And if we go up to see the uh, weight map for the cloak, you can see it's a lot more simple than the hair uh, that we had earlier. Okay, so cloak is just one simple flat object. The hair has many different uh, strands that we need to adjust. So let's export our character. Let's go ahead and select our character here. Uh, you can see if we go to our collision shapes, we have a variety of different collision shapes on our character. Let's go into our scene manager and change our shading mode here to uh, X-ray just so we can see them a bit better. Um, you can see all these collision shapes. These are similar to physics bodies in uh, Unreal Engine, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. You can see we have uh, various ones for the chest, uh, for the midsection, all this stuff. Um, arms, uh, basically they're all different body parts which kind of dictate how soft body, uh, soft body cloths are going to adjust on your character. Uh, you can see here we have different bound types for the character as well. Uh, make sure that you have capsule selected um, in, in uh, iClone. Uh, because box uh, physics shapes will not translate well into Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so let's go back and bring our character back into normal shading mode here. And then we'll go ahead and play back and we'll take a look at our animation. So you can see she's just walking along. The cape flows nicely behind as well as the hair. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Uh, and this is what we're going to uh, link into uh, Unreal Engine 4. Uh, if you don't have the live link, Unreal Engine live link, you can export to FBX format. Okay, so we'll go up to export FBX. Uh, we're going to use an Unreal uh, preset here. And from there, we're going to go down to delete hidden faces because we want to make our character as efficient as possible in terms of uh, resources. And then we'll just go ahead and export. Okay, so when we export, we'll just go ahead and select, uh, we'll just use name female, I guess, whatever. Okay, and then go ahead and export that. And of course, we're going to have a female.json file. Okay, so this is different. Uh, now we have a JSON file, which is included. And we're in Unreal Engine now. And what we're going to do is create a folder for female. Okay, so I'm going to create a female folder. And we're going to import all our assets, the FBX, directly into there. And we're going to choose a high quality shader mode in this case, since we want the best uh, looking results. And go ahead and press OK. Now in the FBX import options, make sure of course that you have skeletal mesh selected, use time zero as reference pose, and a little bit further down, you want to make sure you have import animations at exported time. And then we'll go ahead and import. So after a couple of minutes, it'll import just fine. Uh, if you have live link, you don't have to go through that whole process. Again, just uh, link it up and transfer directly from iClone. And you can see when we play back the first time here, because it's calculating the physics in both programs, it's going a little bit slow, okay? Because basically our computer is trying to calculate uh, physics in two different programs at once. So let's go down to edit and project settings here. And we're going to go ahead and bake our animations in the global physics setting. So this will allow us to bake the animation in iClone and then turn off the physics simulation and take it back and basically just uh, reduce the amount of resources our computer is uh, required to use. Okay, so we're gonna select our hair and our cloak uh, time, our, uh, timeline tracks here. And you can see the soft cloth uh, tracks are the, one we, are the ones we wanna have open in both. Currently, there's no uh, tracks in either one. Okay, you can see the cloak and uh, hair mesh do not have any clips in the soft cloth tracks. Okay, so let's deactivate our link to uh, Unreal Engine and play back. And what's gonna happen is it's going to now bake this soft cloth simulation um, as we move along here. 
Uh, as well, be aware you have you need to have by frame uh, playback in the bottom left of the timeline there. Um, by frame. Okay, so this basically creates a slower simulation but more accurate simulation. Let's go ahead and uh, deselect baking animation, go back to modify, and uh, deactivate our physics now. Okay, so we don't need to show our physics simulation now. Um, if there's no simulation for either the cloak or the hair, uh, we can go back to the beginning and play back. Okay, and now even though we don't have active physics on, you can see the cloak and the hair are still reacting because we've baked that into our animation. Okay, and this is what we want to do when we uh, you know use Live Link to transfer the physics results over. We'll click real time now, and when we play back, it'll be a lot faster uh, and less dreamy than it was before. This is more realistic, okay? So when you switch to real time playback, this is what's going to happen. And that's kind of the result that you want, okay? So we'll go ahead and I'll just uh, play that back one more time, go back to the beginning there, and we'll go ahead and act reactivate our link into Unreal Live Link, okay? And let's see the results that we get in Unreal now. Now that it's not calculating two physics results at once, um, if we go ahead and uh, just choose play in Unreal, let's go to our uh, front camera here and pilot our front camera and then play back in uh, iClone. So what's going to happen now is we're going to have the same results in Unreal that we have in iClone. Okay, but one thing to uh, be aware of, I'm not sure if you saw that, but uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, you may have slightly different results for your collision shapes in Unreal. You can see that the cape will actually go through the leg mesh uh, on certain cases in Unreal. So what we want to do is we want to adjust the physics parameters in Unreal. Uh, so I'm going to go up here to uh, stop the playback here and we're going to choose our female character and right click and just go to browse to assets so we can find it in our, uh, our uh, content browser here. And what we want to do is we want to load up the physics asset in this case. So we'll just double click on that and you can see all the collision shapes here, okay? In uh, Unreal Engine, they're called physics bodies, okay? So you can see the, looks like kind of like the Michelin Man here, all these different shapes. So those are what they use in Unreal, similar to the collision shapes in iClone, um, to basically dictate how soft cloth is going to interact with, uh, you know, uh, rigid body uh, objects, okay? You can see if we move it back and forth here, that the cape reacts appropriately. Uh, this one here is for the hip specifically. Uh, we can go up to our mesh just to see the uh, mesh, and uh, just, this is basically the character without the uh, uh, physics bodies. Okay, you can see right now that there is a, obviously an issue there with the cape going through the uh, the thigh mesh there. Okay, so that's something we need to resolve. So let's go up to window here and uh, make sure we have clothing, our clothing tab enabled there, and just go ahead and take a look at our cloak first. Okay, so with our uh, cloak. Uh, selected. We also have the, the uh, Octavia hair up there as well. Let's go down to our uh, config parameters here. And the first thing we're going to go down to is self collision uh, radius. Let's just make this a little bit larger, first of all. Self collision radius. Okay. So self collision radius is basically the size of a self collision sphere uh, that are centered on each of the vertices in our cloth. Um, so let's go ahead and select self collision radius so we can see that. Uh, okay. When we select our cape, um, let's go ahead and uh, Make it a little bit, uh, put a value of one there. And now you can see the uh, um, self collision uh, shapes there. Okay, uh, one on each vertice, and it's still kind of going through. Um, so maybe you want, may want to adjust the stiffness as well. Let's take the stiffness up to like a value of two. Um, it's going to have a fairly, uh, really a five maybe. It's going to have a fairly minimal result here. Uh, let's go up to activate cloth paint uh, and deactivate it just to uh, reset everything here. And uh, you can see still not uh, the ideal result. It's a little bit better. But we can actually go down to collision thickness uh, and adjust that to a higher level as well. And you can see as we adjust that in real time, um, basically it's uh, kind of fixing itself there. So this is kind of like the the more uh, max uh, effect that you have on, on your character's cloth. It just basically thickens the cloth, thickens the physics results. We can take off that uh, self-collision radii there and uh, see what we got going on here. Okay, so that's a lot better than it was before. Uh, and that's probably the, the main things that you need to do to adjust a soft cloth physics uh, uh, collision with a rigid body, uh, particularly on a character. We can take our character's uh, chest uh, physics shape here, uh, physics body rather, and uh, move it back a little bit just to make sure that we get uh, the ideal uh, look on the, on the cape. We don't want to be too far back, otherwise it might look a little bit weird. But again, try to get that into the, into the correct position. 
and then we'll go up to our mesh and just uh, take a look to see that if uh, see the results if it looks good or not. Okay, and then we can go up to character clothing and let's just go ahead and uh, add some wind strength just to see how it looks with some wind uh, involved there as well. You can see it looks fairly good. Okay, um, we got the cape. Uh, not not digging into the shoulders, not digging into the thighs or anything like that. Uh, we can go up here and uh, adjust our self-collision radius to, to a value of 2 maybe. And we get a bit of a better result like here. You can see it's looking a lot better now. Let's go to our clothing and uh, take down the wind strength. And uh, we'll go ahead and save this. Don't worry about the breakage on the shoulder right now. Uh, once we re-simulate, that'll be gone. Okay, so now back in uh, iClone here. Let's go ahead and go into enter into play mode here in uh, Unreal and uh, pilot our front camera one more time. And then I'm going to go down to uh, make our uh, window a little bit larger here so we can see the results and play back in iClone. Okay, and now when we play back, we won't have as much of a breakage, in fact, no breakage through the thighs. Okay, so that's the result that we want. And that's really how, it, how easy it is to kind of tweak uh, the parameters in Unreal Engine using those physics bodies, the positioning and size of the physics bodies, as well as the uh, um, self-collision parameters there in Unreal Engine 4 to get the results that you want. One more thing to keep in mind is that the more physics bodies that you have on your character, the harder the calculations are going to be. You can see the larger uh, physics bodies we have, like the hips and the thighs right here. They have no problem pushing back the, uh, the cape uh, with ease very accurately. But uh, if we click on the uh, shin or the uh, lower leg here, we can go ahead and uh, we move that around. It's not going to really affect the uh, the cape. And the reason is because it's kind of a lot of the uh, resource calculations for the physics are being um, taken up by a lot of the other objects that we don't need, the lot other physics bodies, so like the arms, for example. So what we can do is we can just delete these things like the upper arm or the, rather the lower arm and the hands. All these physics bodies that don't need to be active, we can delete them. And uh, then once we delete them, we can... Once again, select the uh, shin bone here and uh, move that physics uh, our physics body back and forth. And now you can see it's reacting properly and pushing the cape away. Just keep in mind that the more physics bodies you have on your character, the more calculations are required and it may not be as accurate as you need. So it's very important to be efficient with the physics bodies as well. Um, so really, that's all I have to show you guys in this tutorial. So thanks so much for watching. We have another tutorial on uh, prop physics in Unreal Engine 4 that also includes how to install the auto setup plugin if you don't have that installed already. But then again, I highly recommend getting Unreal Live Link if you're able to, if you're working uh, you know, a lot in Unreal. Unreal Live Link is, some, is a quintessential tool uh, that I highly recommend getting. Okay, so again, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.